you're the author of your own story, can you influence the weather to manipulate it that you are driving from your home and going to the airport that the weather cooperates with you and be perfect? And those of you who live in Scandinavia, you live in East Coast or in Northern Hemisphere in, in Canada or East Coast of United States or in Europe, you know about bad weather, you know about storms, blizzards, all kinds of different things that happen. Um, are you in co control of that? So in that day, when you're driving from home, to get to the airport, the weather has to say yes. So there's no hurricanes, there's no earthquakes, there's no blizzards, there's no storms. There's no um, excessive wind, whatever it is, everything is working. So when you're paying attention, when you're looking at this, when you just want to do a simple thing, and that simple thing is that you get in your car and drive to the airport. You get in your car and you want to go grocery shopping. Whatever, whatever that you're going to do, there is millions of different elements that they all have to be cooperating and hand in hand agreeing with each other that you do a simple thing. That simple thing that we don't think about it is to get in my car and I drive to the airport. Am I in control of all these different millions and millions of different elements? Is this all a part of my free will? And that's not it. I can't control the weather. I can't control the traffic lights. I can't control other drivers that their judgments is correct. They pay attention. They're not on their phone texting. They're not distracted by their kids in the back seat. The two kids are fighting with each other and mommy's driving and her attention goes to quiet the kids. And all of a sudden she goes off track and she has a head to head collusion with you and she kills you or you both get killed. So who's in charge of that? Who's running this show? Is this your free will? Are you the one who's manifesting this? When you begin to look at this from a higher perspective and a different level of consciousness, you begin to see that you can't possibly be in charge of so many different elements and components of life to manipulate them to do exactly what you want them to do and things go your way. So I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to examine it in your life to see if you're manifesting it or it's a part of a greater force. Now, as you go deeper in your work and you shift your consciousness and you begin to open up to this idea, you begin to open your eyes and this realization that you're really not in control of anything because you don't, you're not an individual separated from life. You are a part of life. And it is life that chooses. It's life that has written your destiny. It's life that operates through you. It's making decisions through you and all these things. And we talked about it. The reason for that is because the source wants to experience all these different aspects of life, the good, the bad, the ugly, the failure and the success. The source wants to experience them. And life really doesn't have a preference. Life doesn't prefer something beautiful versus something ugly. It doesn't care. 
Life equally creates beauty and ugliness. That's a part of the duality of third dimension. Life equally creates good people and bad people, angelic people and evil people. Life creates both of them and supports their existence. They're all parts of life. They're all manifestations of life. If life cared and wanted to prefer one thing over the other thing, then it would have been all angelic realms. It would all be forces of light and love and angels and everyone's wearing white and everybody's very peaceful and everyone's very loving and nothing bad ever happens in life. Everything is just positive and lovey-dovey. But that's not how it is, is it? There's a lot of ugliness in the world. There's a lot of cruelty in the world. There's a lot of darkness in the world too. Now why would life create that as well? Obviously, life doesn't have preferences. It doesn't prefer one over the other. It's producing and creating both of them simultaneously. It is us who have a judgment over it. It's us who prefer light over darkness. And if you were brought up in a condition that you enjoy darkness, then you don't like light. And we can see that there are the groups of human beings on this planet that they are attracted to the darkness. They're not into the light. And that equally exists. I want you to pay attention to that. Soak it in. Let's sit on it for a moment. We have darkness, we got negative stuff, we got disasters, we got wars, famine, disease, as well as all the good stuff in this world. Why? Why do we have both of them? Why don't we just have the good stuff? It's because life produces both equally and life is experience all of them simultaneously. They're all a part of the oneness. So are we. We are a part of the oneness, all of us. And in this understanding that we're a part of the oneness, means you're not an individual separated from the oneness. You're not somewhere else. You are a part of it. In that understanding, in this shift of consciousness, of understanding, in this opening that your mind starts to open and you start to see the bigger picture or a glimpse of it, a number of things start to happen. One thing starts to happen is that in the beginning, the mind will come and say, oh my God, well, how am I going to pay my bills and how am I going to take care of my children and look after myself if I'm not in control? If I don't have free will, if I'm not the one who's choosing things. So who's going to take care of it? How is it happening? But then as you start to relax into this understanding and you're kind of letting go by switching your attention inwards, you start hanging out with this guy inside you. You're hanging out, you're bringing your attention to the source, to the power. As you're doing this, your mind starts to quiet down 